All right, now we have created an object in memory, and how to use it. Now we have a reference variable, and we use this reference variable, we can access the object in the, in the memory, okay? So how to write code to use the, these objects in the memory? Here's the format. We use a qualify name to access the object we created in the memory. Here's two concepts, simple name and the qualify name. The same name means when we define a variable inside class, we use simple name. For example, in a rectangle. Now we come back to the code. In the rectangle, we have this variable, this member variable as width or height. This variable, I use the sample name. But if we want to access the object, inside the object, we have the rectangle object, for example, the width and height variable, we from the outside of object to access them, we should use the qualifier name. How to write the qualifier name? The form of the qualifier name, we write that as the reference variable dot and the variable name. For example, the right angle. Yeah. Uh, suppose we have create a reference variable which uh, to be used access a red angle object inside the memory. This reference variable is rect1. So if you want to access the variable name that's width inside the red angle, we write the name as reference variable name rect and score one. Here's the reference variable and dot. And then right side it's a variable name, for example the width or the height. So, we can use a qualifier name to access this variable inside the object. But, we must notice, it is not <clears throat> recommended to use this form to access the variables inside the object. Why? Because we have talking about this very important feature of this object-oriented programming, that is Capturation. Now we have object, and inside we have the member variable, for example, the width. And if we use this form, this qualifier name, we can access the variable inside the object. If you do like this, you will break the capturation. So it is not recommended to do like this. Instead, we should use get and set method. For example, now we have a, a return class, and inside we have width and height, the two member variables, and we define a set and get method for them. For example, now if we want to access a width variable, we should define the set width and get width the two methods to access the width variable. The set method used to set a value for the width and the get width method used to get the variable get the width get the value of width. Okay. So we write it the set width we should have a, an argument we limit w and now we use assignment operator to give this value to the width, to the member variable width. Here the width is simple name, and this w is the argument, is a parameter. And when we invocate the set width, we give this argument, and we give its width. And if we want to get the width, get the value from the rectangle object, we should define another method named getWidth. And inside the method body, 
right tonight when statement does return with so we this is integer so we invoke it get with this method we get the value of the width of the member variables so we should use the method to manipulate the variables inside the object so you are not allowed to access these variables directly use qualify name it's okay but it's not recommended we should use the set and the get method to use them to access these member variables it's a right way to access the member variables inside object so now we define the get and set methods now we create a rectangle object inside the memory and we define a reference variable name as rect1 I use this variable to access the rectangle object inside the memory and now we got this reference variable name is rect1 so write the form as rect1.width we can use this qualified name to access the variable the width inside the rectangle object it's okay but it's not recommended so instead we should use the get width use this method to get the value of the width it's the right way and I strongly recommend you to use this method to define this method inside the object to get the value of this variable or set a variable for these variables. Okay. And if you want to call or invoke these methods, we have defined it object. We use the same qualified name. We write as the reference variable dot and the right side is a method name. And maybe you have to give this argument at this list. It's the argument list here. For example, now we define a uh, get area this method inside the rectangle class. Okay, inside the rectangle class, we define a method, a member method name as get area. We will calculate this error. We use the width times height. We get error of a rectangle, so it is a return error for us. And if we want to call this method, we should write, use a qualified name, we write it as rect1, rect underscore 1, this is reference name, a reference variable, uh, and dot, and then this get area. Okay. And use this qualified name, we call the method we define the object. And the same, inside the rectangle, we define a move method. We move the rectangle from one place to another. We change the top left point of the rectangle. Okay. So in the move method, in this method, we call this method. And this is the reference variable dot. And the move is this method name inside this rectangle object. And it gives two arguments, the 40 and the 72. Give this new point of the top left point of the rectangle. So the rectangle move from one place to another place. Okay, use this method. But a point is you sometimes you cannot access this method to call this method because we have this access control mechanism. Uh, that is we well, have in the future, we're talking about it. Uh, when we define a class inside the class, we define as member variables or the methods. Uh, and we have this keyword that is public or private or protected. Same like this. This modifies what define the access neighbor for these variables or methods. So in the future, we're talking about these words, and these words will de determine whether 
you can access this method of variables or not. We call it access control mechanism. Okay. We're talking about in the next chapter, the fifth chapter, about the class, about the access control mechanism. Okay. Well, now uh, we move on to the next concept. It's about the garbage connection. That is, we have three steps for objects for its life cycle. Let's create the object, the object spawn, and put it inside the memory. That's the first step. The next step, we use the reference of use qualify name to access objects inside the memory. We can manipulate the variables or the cause method. The second step. And third step, when the object finishes task, it may be not be used anymore. So at this time, we should delete these objects, remove them from the memory, because this we have the limited space for our memory. So we should remove these objects that no longer be used and release the memory for other objects. For other cases, we will create new objects inside the memory. Okay? So this process, we deleted the objects that no longer been used. This process we call garbage connection. Okay. This is a very important idea. And when an object is become a garbage, that is the object is no more reference to them. As we know, we define a uh, a class and based on code of class we create the object inside the memory so we have a reference variable. We have a reference variable we access the object inside the memory. So there's a reference to the object but if this object is no longer used this will no reference were to them. So we can check the number of the reference to the object. If the number of reference becomes zero, that means this object is no longer been used. Okay. To find this rubbish inside the memory and remove them or delete them, these tasks we call garbage connection. And these tasks will be performed automatically. This is very important. So as a Java programmer, we don't know how to remove them, how to delete this object. We don't care. We just write code, we just create objects and use it, and if it's not used, we don't care. Just let it be. But the system, the platform, the JVM, will have a garbage connector with check this object time to time to check well this is objects that no longer be used so they mark this object as a rubbish and it will remove them soon okay so this work will be performed automatically okay when the object become a rubbish and will be removed from the memory now there's a code we have the my class and inside my class, we have main method, inside main method, now we have three statements here. Object, this object, and A is a reference variable, and new, an object. So, if we execute this statement, and inside memory, I give you a diagram, there is a memory, or memory here. And the first statement, when we execute this statement, and we get a object. Well, this object inside the memory, the type is object. Okay. And this reference variable in, yeah, so a reference variable, and use this assignment operator. Well, we assign address of the object to the variable A. So we build a connection between the reference variable and object use arrow okay and this statement 
As the next statement, we skewed it. No, we have another reference variable and access another object. This type is still the object. Okay. And then the, th the third statement, we executed the same operation. We create the object inside the memory and we use the reference variable, which is name is C. And we use this variable to access this object. So we have three objects inside the memory and three reference variables which can use to access three objects. Okay. And remember, in the JVM, we have a counter for each of object. So this uh, counter for this object, we get a, a table here, is a counter. Now this, we have three row for this table and each row for one, for this object, for this object, for this object, this counter. The counter means we very, record the lump of reference to this object. So now we have the object, another one, and the third one. So A and B and C, so each of the objects, the number of the reference is one. Okay, the counter means the number of reference to this object. The next statement, well, b equal a, while we use the assignment operator, b equal a means, remember, the reference variable inside the reference variable actually is a address of the object. So this statement means now we have the reference variable a who access object. Now, we change the B, use the value of A, use the stress which is stored in the variable A. That means now the B, this reference variable, will change its point to access to this object. And it will not to access this object. Four. So this statement, the change address inside of this reference variable. Now, this reference variable B access this object, and not this one, not the old one. Okay. So this counter. Now, for this object, from one, and change two because we have two reference. To this object, but this object, and from one and change to zero, we just error to mark this change. At this time, when we execute this statement, the same process we assign address inside the a variable to c. That means now the c, the reference variable, will access this object and do not to access the old object anymore. So the counter this variable now become three. Well, the number of reference to this object become three and to this object and decreased to zero. This is how it's changed. The counter, the number of reference change. So the Gupta connector will check this counter. If you found oh now as reference a number of reference becomes zero, then the JVM will mark this object as a rubbish. Yeah, you are rubbish. I'm ruined. Okay. Automatically. And then 
when this object, a lump of reference to this object, it becomes zero and the JVM will mark this object as an unused object that they rubbish. So mark the rubbish and we delete them from memory. So this object and this object will delete it after be marking as the unused object or rubbish. And then it will be removed from the memory. And the space occupied by this object will be released. And how about this object? This object we now have three references to it, so it's not a rubbish. But if we execute this statement, for example, a equal now, so now it means a reference variable that access nothing with now, access nothing. Okay, so that means if you execute the statement, that means we this reference variable will to access nothing. That means we cut this arrow. So the number of reference now becomes two. And the next line, next statement, B equal now. That the same process we cut the arrow, cut the access from the reference variable B to this object, and the number of reference become now change to one, and then the next statement, the same process, and the reference uh, cut this connection between this reference variable and this object, and the lump of reference to this object will decrease and to a zero. So after these three statements, we executed them, and the lump of reference to this object will become zero, finally. So, at this time, the JVM, the garbage connector, will find, oh, now this object, the lump of reference becomes zero, so at this time, we'll mark this object as a rubbish and we'll delete them soon. Okay. So as a programmer, if you know this object you create it when it will become a rubbish and released by the JVM automatically. Uh, although you don't care how to delete it from the memory, but you should know when it become a rubbish and will be deleted. It's very important because you build a system, if inside a system you create a too many objects inside this system, that means you will create a lot of rubbish in the future. The point is, you should design your system carefully and use objects as you want, but the number of objects should be less as nice as you can. Okay. That's the idea.